What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to yet another tutorial in which we do a unified shader header so we get an easier time working in the game. In order to begin we need to create a new file under source called shader header. In this file I'm going to post in a bunch of code and it's easier to explain it that way. First of all at the very top we have an ifdev engine. This is the part that is actually visible to only the engine and not the shader code inside the shader. So for example the fragment shader doesn't know about any of this. And this is the cool thing about OpenGL or GLSL. I don't know if this is possible in HLSL. You can put a define here and then when we load in the shader and link the program with OpenGL this part will be omitted because we do not have set this is defined and so basically we can put in c++ code here like the pragma ones we can include our schnitzel lib and then we define our vectors the normal vector to the integer vector to and the vector four to the vector two vector two and vector four equivalents for glsl so at the very bottom in our transform we can use these lowercase handles instead of the real ones that we have in the engine and then they will work in the shader as well as in the engine you can also see that inside this shader factor here we have the bit define macro the one that we did the last time and we also have our bits you know for the flip x and for the flip y options and then if you take a look at the transform at the very bottom you might see that it only has the rendering options and now it has a float layer last time i accidentally put the animation index into the transform there was actually a mistake so we're going to fix this now actually we want to completely get rid of this transform because we don't need it anymore because we are going to include it at the very top now so at the very top includes the shader header.h okay now this is actually everything that we have to do in our rendering interface there's not much else we have to do but we have to change the gl renderer.cpp so switch over to that and then go to the shader creation in the gl init function we create two shaders the vertex and the fragment shader inside of this function we need to load in the header file now and also i would like to change the vertex shader here to shader source so if you want to rename this and then i want you to paste in the shader header file loading we basically load the source file shader header.h using the transient storage and the file size i also add in the error checking for the shader header if we are unable to load one then we just return zero now when we create the shader instead of just supplying our vertex shader this shouldn't be vertex shader anymore that should be shader source not sure why that didn't get changed so make sure that this is actually shader source instead of only supplying our one shader source we need to supply multiple sources and this looks something like this we have an array of shader sources at the very top we have the version then we have our shader header and then we have our actual shader source and this shader header will be included in every single shader that we load from now which means that instead of setting the shader source like this we have to do an array size from shader sources and we supply the shader sources and then it basically reads in all the files when we set the source of the shader after that we compile the shader like usual and then we check for success this doesn't change if you go ahead and build the program right now you will get an error unknown type i vector 2 basically what is happening now the game is including the shader header and it's looking for the engine define but it doesn't know about any engine define or anything because we have to actually add that when we are compiling our game these defines will be added to these clan commands so at the very top we add in the defines d engine and then we add the dollar defines to both of the game dll and the engine dll building now will build us the program no problem which means that we have now essentially unified our shaders but we also have to change our shaders if we were to run the program now we would run into errors we have a bunch of redefines and we also have the problem that the first thing in our shader the version is happening twice so for example if we go to the vertex shader this version core can only happen once and we already put that into the shader sources in our renderer here so we have to get rid of this for sure we already defined the macro and we already defined define these and we also define the struct already additionally i also changed the naming of these it is now called rendering option flip x so in the vertex shader at the very bottom here where we check if we want to flip x or y replace this with the proper naming i like this naming a little bit better it doesn't have to change uh, it's just a personal preference so rendering option x and rendering option y so that is the cleanup in the vertex shader and then in the fragment shader we have to get rid of the version here 
running the program will work already so this is not very much that we have to do uh, in addition i also want to fix a problem that we have encountered or that you might not even know about and so let me show you what actually happens if we switch over to render doc and i'm pretty sure you remember this from a previous tutorial if you didn't it's basically a way of inspecting our graphics when we have an application so we can put a path to the executable here and then launch that once in the game we can press f12 to run a capture this capture gives us information and the most notable thing at the bottom is that everything loaded without any problems. Now if I switch back into the game and then change for example the fragment shader so that everything is red you can see that it worked right and then we do another screen capture using f12 now i load the screen capture you can see at the bottom that it gives me an error and i'm double clicking on this error basically says there's no vertex shader bound to draw and we are using the api incorrectly now i've been trying to look into this problem and i couldn't find a solution essentially what the problem is is our reloading of the shaders this code right here is not working properly and instead what works for me is creating a new program checking if this new program works and if this new program works then assigning the program id again and deleting the old program so essentially what is happening here and we can get rid of this trace this was just for debugging purposes the if check is the same and the creation of the shader stays the same we assert on both of these and then the difference here is that we are now creating a new program we are attaching both shaders and then we are linking it then we do the detach and we check whether the program works basically we're checking the link status and uh, the weird thing is that even if we do this the old way without creating a new program it will still not show up an error uh, the error only happens or shows up in render doc so apparently opengl doesn't report this error at all and it just keeps working i tested if opengl would create a new program like implicitly that i don't know of but i've done this now as an for an hour and i checked the memory usage of the game and that never changed it was basically 300 megabytes all the time so that wasn't the problem and so i don't know why i have to create a new program so if you know in the comments please let me know it would be great to know why that is so basically if i delete the program the old program then assign the new program id and use the new program if we build this and in order to build this we have to close this we can then run this again in render doc obviously the first frame should be fine right at the very bottom left we have no problems then we switch back over here into the fragment shader and we undo the red coloring and then we do another capture everything's fine if we load this in you see the check mark right here so apparently this is the correct api usage it coincides with how you do this in vulcan you delete the old pipeline and then you create a new one uh, would have been cool if we could just reuse the same program id but apparently you can't so yeah and this is everything i wanted to do in this tutorial a little bit of a cleanup uh, making it easier to use the transform in both the shader and the game hope you liked it and if you did please leave a like and subscribe like always it really does help a lot and the next time we're actually going to add in font rendering and doing a little bit of cleanup there as well so see you then peace